So, oil and filter tutorial for the BMW R9T. This is one of those real basic routine bits of maintenance. We've obviously done a video previously about the service schedules. The oil and filter are due every year regardless of mileage. So it's one of those things you are going to do quite a lot. We're going to be changing the oil and filter on our race bike, number five. Um, this is one of our Hooligan flat track machines. It's definitely doing an oil and filter change. So I'm going to crack on with it once uh, we've just shown you the tools that we're going to need for the job. So. Relatively simple job doing the, um, the oil filter and oil change. It's a grubby job, so make sure you get yourself some gloves. The oil filter, we use the mild ones. They're exactly the same as the BMW ones, except they don't have the BMW badge on them. Same factory, same process with everything else. So that's what we tend to go for. BMW uh, tool for undoing the cap on the right-hand side cylinder head cover. This is something that you actually already have if you've got the full tool kit. It's on the screwdriver handle. Um, they've doubled that up to be able to undo it. We tend to buy a separate, separate one just because it's just easier for use. Um, the oil filter tool, again, BMW R90 specific, an eight mil Allen. We've got a ratchet and we've got a torque wrench, which is going to become extremely useful later on. So it's all fairly straightforward. I'm going to head over to the bike and we're going to get the uh, oil dropped and then we can go through everything else. Right, cool, now that the filter's off, I'm gonna spin around the other side and undo the sump using the eight mil Allen bit. This bit will cause oil to go everywhere. So be prepared for all of the four liters to drop. So one thing I should mention is the oil will drain naturally a lot quicker if it's warmer, it thins out basically. So what we do tend to do normally is run the engines up for maybe one to two minutes beforehand. Um, obviously if you then go this side of the exhaust, do be careful because the exhausts are gonna be extremely hot. Another little tip is the uh, special tool. When I've dumped all the oil out of the bike, I tend to just take the cap off that acts as a little bit of a reminder for me that the bike has got no oil in it. Um, I have worked in a dealership and I have seen it before where someone who's got so busy or been distracted or they've got other stuff going on in the service that they've not seen that off and they've tried to start running the bike up for a good few seconds before someone's run over and stopped it. So by taking the cap off, it's a reminder to me to say, do not start. Sump plug comes with a crush ring. It's a one-time use crush washer. That needs to be obviously discarded from the old one. And additionally, as I said a minute ago with the filter, that also comes with a big rubber ring in here. You need to make sure that this is still within the filter when you take it off, because if it's still sat on the bottom of the engine, when you try to fit your, um, your filter with the fresh one, it won't be able to go on and seat properly. Okay, so fresh crush ring on there. Um, you basically want to do the exact reverse of everything that you've done so far. So I'm just going to pop that in there and get it wound in by hand, first of all, to make sure it's seated. You do not want this to go in pissed, basically, <laughs> to go in sideways and to take and strip the thread. So doing it by hand sort of ensures that you've got it done properly. Do that out by hand, and then with the eight mil bit on your torque wrench, you want to go for 32 Newton meters. So we have a blog that goes through a lot of the servicing and just general torque settings all over the bike. So check that out if you don't remember it, but it will be in the notes in uh, the bottom of the video below. Bring it around until you get a nice secure click. That's part one done. Okay, so fresh filter again. This one's got the ring in it. Just make sure the other ring's falling off or it won't seat properly. Another little tip is to just take a little bit of the used oil that's come out from the drip tray and just float that across the new filter, just allow it to seal nicely. Stick on your filter tool, and that's gonna go up. There's one big thread right in the middle. You can't really get it wrong. Again, stick it on by hand first. You do not want anything in the engine to thread in any way. There we go, so that's now on there tight. So this is gonna be 11 Newton meters. Do make sure everything on the bottom of the pike is torqued. 32 on the sump, 11 on the filter. The first place 
This oil is going to drop if you haven't done these up correctly is firstly the floor, secondly is going to be a rear wheel. See you later. Okay, so the Boxer engine takes four litres at the oil, um, oil change stage. We tend to put, as you can see here, this is the line for four litres. We tend to put uh, just a little bit below and then what we do is check the oil level and see how much is going to be tops up so you can get an exact amount in there. Um, we are currently using Poutaline Boxer 4 oil. Um, it's a specifically designed oil by a good quality oil company for your Boxer engine. So it's our current default. We tend to use the Poutaline products for that and for the gearbox oils. Because you know you've already measured out the four litres into the can, there's no worries about overfilling or underfilling at this stage. It's just a case of get it right in the can and glug the lot in. Okay, so that's all of the oil in. Everything oil filter related and change related um, with the oil is important. Um, the final important mark is putting this cap on, which I'm doing a bad job of. There we go. Putting this cap on properly, making sure it's tight with the oil filter tool, and then making sure that the oil level is correct. You always start with the bike cold when you do a level check and then you must, must run it up to operating temperature. We recommend about 80, 85 degrees. And then you do the level check using the sight window on the other side. So what you might find is you get a little bit of um, smoke breathing. It's just some of the oil, the waste oil, just um, from when we drop the filter, just sort of burning off. That sometimes drips on the exhaust, that sort of thing. You also might find that you get a few oil drips underneath the bike. That's um, basically, again, where the waste oil has come out and the fresh oil has gone on, it's just around the filter. It's just, it's just there. It's just a little bit on the sump plug because I saw it all dripping around the filter beforehand. It's just where that warms up and drips off. So just make sure you've got no serious leaks. I tend to use a little bit of brake cleaner just to clean everything off and make sure that everything's nice and um, neat down there. And then once the bike's run up to operating temperature around 80, 85 degrees, leave the bike for around two to three minutes. And what you'll find is the sight window here um, should be somewhere between half and full on there. If it's a little bit low, um, just add a top up. That sight glass window has around about 250 mil from top to bottom. So you can safely add about 100 mil um, at a time to make sure that it's up to the right operating level. Um, and that's it basically. Dispose your waste all correctly. Make sure you've checked all your torques and if you've got any other queries or questions, pop them in the comments below.